So let's say I slap a 16 millimeter lens on my full frame EOS R. I'll be able to get a shot with my head, most of my upper body, and a lot of the background in the frame just by holding the camera about a foot away from me. Now if I were to put that same 16 millimeter lens on the R10, or any other APS-C camera, I would have to hold the camera about three feet away from me. Now obviously my arms aren't that long, but hypothetically speaking, let's say that I was able to put the camera on a three foot selfie stick, my arms and shoulders would get tired super quick, and my audio would suck because I'd be so far away from the mic. And this wouldn't just be limited to vlogging, it would make it extremely difficult to get any type of real estate exteriors, interiors, or even wide landscape shots. So there's five major advantages that you're gonna gain from adapting your Canon EOS R10 into a full frame camera using a speed booster, also known as a focal reducer. The first one is that the 1.6 times crop on the Canon R10 is gonna be reduced to a 1.1 times crop, which is pretty close to a full frame camera. Now what that's gonna do for you is that it's gonna allow you to get closer to your subject than you normally would be able to on the APS-C camera. The next major advantage is that it will give your lens an extra stop light. So an f2.8 lens would turn into an f2. Now this is a crucial advantage because it means you won't have to bump your ISO up as high so you're going to get a cleaner image with less noise and grain. It also means that the lighting doesn't have to be as intense which is going to help you out a lot when you're in the studio doing interviews or YouTube videos like this because sometimes the studio lights could be pretty blinding. Now the reason you're getting that extra stop of light is because you're basically getting an extra stop of aperture when using the speed booster. Now when you combine that with having to come closer to your your subject, then what that means is that you're going to get a blurrier background than you normally would, which is great because everybody loves a little extra bokeh. Now the next major advantage is that the speed booster works with EF full frame lenses not the newer RF lenses, which are many times extremely overpriced. And there's a whole bunch of legendary EF glass out there that in many cases is not just cheaper than RF glass, but performs better. And if you ever upgrade your R10 or R7 to a full frame camera, you can use those same EF lenses. All you would need is just a simple and cheap adapter. So let's take a 16 millimeter lens for example. If you use it with the speed booster, it's gonna give you a nice wide field of view, right around 17 millimeters. But if you use it with the normal adapter, it's going to give you a 25 millimeter field of view, making it two lenses in one. So looking at all these advantages, it's a no brainer to grab a speed booster for your R10 or R7. Now I'll leave Amazon links in the description below to the speed booster, but I know currently they're out of stock. But you can also purchase the speed booster at the Viltrox store. And if you use the coupon code FULAN at checkout, you'll get 10% off not only the speed booster, but anything else you purchase from the Viltrox store. Now I'm going to give you my recommendation for a few notable EF lenses to keep an eye out for and they'll be across various budgets and focal lengths. The first one is extremely budget friendly coming in only at $125 and the focal length of 50 millimeters is extremely versatile and as you may have guessed I'm talking about the 50 millimeter f1.8 also known as the nifty 50. Now this may not be the sharpest lens in the world but the thing is for filmmaking a lot of times you don't want that clinically sharp look anyway and when you pair this lens with the speed booster, you're gonna get right around 50 millimeters. And when you use it with the normal adapter, you're gonna get around 85 millimeters, which is an extremely useful focal length. Now for my style of filmmaking, this next lens is probably the lens that I use more than any other lens. And that's the Tamron 15 to 30, which is an amazing ultra wide zoom lens with a f2.8 aperture and image stabilization built into the lens. Now optically, this lens is neck to neck with the Canon 16 to 35 f2.8, but the Canon is $2,200, whereas this is $1,100. And this also has image stabilization, whereas the Canon doesn't. Now if you're not that into wide angle lenses and you prefer that medium range, Tamron also makes a 24 to 70 f2.8, which is a pretty legendary lens as well. And I'll leave links in the description below to those, as well as all the other lenses that I talked about. Now once you you pair your R10 or R7 with the speed booster and one of these amazing EF lenses, it should help you get some amazing looking footage. But if you want to give it that extra cinematic pop, then you may want to check out my LUT pack available at FulanCreative.com, which would be like the icing on the cake. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you got any questions for me or you just want to say what's up, leave me a comment down in the comments section. Oh and by the way, you should really check out this video 
right here where I talk about five camera hacks that actually work. These are easy to use, tried and tested techniques that are gonna level up your cinematography and videography. So you should really check that out. It's been a pleasure kicking it with you and I'll see you in the next video. It's your boy Fulan and I'm out. Peace.